Happy Monday, Floss Tube. Mm. Hello, crafty friends. Welcome back to another Monday of the week. It's Monday yet again. I have, oh, I've got some good things in my work day today. I've got a meeting at 10 o'clock with um, the head of the AV uh, department at the convention center for the modern folk embroidery retreat that's happening at the beginning of October. Jacob's gonna hop in on that uh, on that Zoom call with, with Hannah and I so that we can make sure that we have all of the technology ready to go for um, you know simple things like microphones and uh, projector and a big screen so that everybody in the room can see what Jacob is showing us. Um, I know he's got some PowerPoint uh, stuff that he wants to, to use to show. Um, he is also bringing uh, many, not, I don't know how many, but he is bringing some of his original samplers with him. He is bringing the original, I still can't say it, Chirchi and Girchi, see, not even close. The mother and daughter, huge reproduction sampler that um, is the star of the show of our retreat. We still have some space. Uh, if you have been thinking that you might like to come, it is probably the only time that I will be able to bring Jacob to Canada. So we still have some space, I'm not sure the next time when he's going to be able to get to North America. If you are a fan of modern folk embroidery, the retreat is here in London, Ontario, Canada. We still have a couple of spaces open. It's a smaller retreat. We've capped the attendance at 100 guests. We actually cut our number down. Um, so we are now capped at 100 people per weekend. There's gonna be six people per table. There's going to be lots of opportunity to meet Jacob and see everything that he has to show us and learn from him, I think it's going to be it's going to be an amazing time. So 10 a.m. That's uh, so we're going to take care of that little job today. The other job I've got to do this morning is I am testing out a new product that I'm thinking I want to bring into the shop. Um, my shop is Evertote. In just in case you're new here, hello, welcome. My name is Caroline and uh, uh, my shop is Evertote and I'm thinking of, I, I don't carry, I'm not like a typical online needle workshop or brick and mortar needle workshop. I tend to carry only very specific things. I bring in things that I wanna stitch, I bring in my, my favorite tools and those are kind of, you know, I, I sort of have a narrower focus. Um, and so this product, is one that I have been wanting to try. Uh, it was my friend Candace from I Can So Make That, S-E-W. She makes beautiful project bags. Uh, she's also, um, like me, she's from here in Ontario, and she was a vendor at Stitch North this past uh, April. And she had brought in some extra, you know, interesting products for her booth at Stitch North, and one of them was this, dome threaded needle case made by uh, Clover. So these Clover products, you can usually find them at the big box stores, but I thought I'd bring a few in for the shop, but I wanna test them out first before I sell them. So that's kind of my job. I, I need to test these things and make sure that I like them and it's something that I would use and then um, if I do, then I'll pop them in the shop. So they're not available yet. But hopefully, after today, we'll see if we'll see what I think. So yeah, what they are is you can thread, pre-thread, pre-load up to ten needles. I think Carrie might be experimenting with hers. See, Carrie managed to get one from Candace at Stitch North. By the time I found out about them, she was sold out. So it's taken me until now to track them down. Um, I one of my one of my suppliers has them, so I tracked it down brought a couple in and now I'm gonna test them out. But Carrie has been testing out two needles in each slot for hers. Um, I'm just gonna start with one. So I've preloaded in five needles with floss for a Jacob design that I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. And what you do is you, you, you pre-thread your needle, you slide your needle in the slot, you tuck the thread around one of the grooved discs and then, now there's gonna be a noise, so just so you're ready for it. 
um, it makes you you wind it up and it winds the thread inside the bobbin case so it tucks it away and stores it inside there and so I now have five needles loaded with floss ready to stitch and for a monochromatic stitcher I think this might be really a useful little tool so also for me because of the way my brain works and how I like to think about how I'm working on my projects I like to have little tiny mini goals so for me I've loaded up five needles and so my mini goal would be to fully stitch these lengths of floss that are in here into my project and then that's my you know my little check mark right I've accomplished my goal so the floss that I have in here is the um, some of our Virlanda floss, which was dyed by Carrie of Roxy Floss Co. It's this beautiful brown with a green undertone. Um, it's gorgeous. It's closely based off of the Bellsnickel floss that was in last year's Holiday Countdown box. And so um, my floss is usually remnants from Hank's leftover, so it looks a little bit messy on the thing but it's floss it works so what I've done is I've taken some from there that's my floss for this project I've loaded it into here so this morning I'm gonna test out a little bit of that and see what I think of this dome threaded needle case and here's my project so this is modern folk embroidery when this you see remember me um, I love Jacob came out with five in total Firlanda style charts. One of them was an original reproduction that's massive. And then there were five smaller charts. So I'll pop in a photo here of this, um, the, the full design here. And uh, I'm stitching this on a 40 count, uh, 40 count Panettone Roxy Flosco linen with one strand of the Virlanda floss. So Jacob, when he saw the Belsnickel floss in the holiday countdown pack from last year, he said, you know, this is really close to the color that I want for the Virlanda samplers. And so Carrie tried a few more recipes. They, they came upon this one, this was the winner. And so this is, uh, this is the one that we use. So, this is, that's a little job for me this morning. I gotta test this out. Might as well put a few stitches in. So that is, uh, that's my little good morning, how do you do? And I'm off to drink my coffee. I, I probably won't get to my sampler September stitching until lunchtime today. I've got an, I've got an early day today. It's taken me a while to get an appointment for an oil change. For my car so i have to leave work early today in order to make that appointment um but you know those kind of adult life things but it's also a little bit annoying because it kind of is going to interrupt the flow of my afternoon so it means that i will probably um, finish my work day today at home because where i have to take the car is much closer to my home than to the workshop so there's no point in driving back all the way here um, especially with the price of gas these days. So I better get to it and I'll check in with you in a little bit. This is just a note to future Caroline that people, some people asked me to share the pork chop recipe. So I'm filming this because I don't have time to, sh to tell you about the pork chop recipe right now, but I want to make sure I do it today. So this is my little reminder to make sure I do that later. Ooh, it's later in the afternoon. It is almost two o'clock and I've had no time to stitch, <laughs> none. And you know, that's okay, that's what happens, right? Um, we've had some issues with, uh, those of you, um, if, if you're watching this and you're one of those people who is waiting for an order of linen uh, by the name of French Hen from uh, Roxy Flosco here, we had a real problem with a dye lot issue and it just didn't come out the way it was supposed to and it wasn't even close. Like you, you couldn't even consider it a different dye lot, a French hen, it was just wrong. Um, and dyeing is a, uh, it's a, it's a chemical uh, ex experiment. <laughs> it's a science experiment. Every time you never know what you're gonna come up with. 
but this linen need to be, needed to be redone. So, uh, and in fact, it ended up needing to be redone twice. Poor Carrie, it, um, it was just one of those things. So we have some customers who have been waiting since the middle of August for their linen, and we think, finally, um, we think it, it's, it's looking good. So that French hand linen should be ready, pressed and cut by Thursday, hopefully out the door from the Evertote workshop on Friday. The other thing that we're working hard on is of course, as you know, the holiday countdown that we're packing and shipping. The first approximately 200 boxes have been shipped and are on their way, which is exciting. And so the first, uh, the first wave, there are going to be several waves throughout this month. Um, it's a, it's the biggest, it's the largest scale project that we do here. Um, it was last year and it is proving to be so again this year. And of course we've got everything else for the rest of the shop, regular sales, um, all happening at the same time as well. So the first, the first big wave of holiday countdown has now gone out the door. We are currently packing and shipping the second big wave. So not to worry if you haven't received your confirmation notice yet that it, your holiday countdown hasn't gone out yet. We will take this entire month, the entire month of September um, to get those orders out. It is, it's an incredible amount of work that my team here does for the entire month. So we are, we are on it. We're working on it. And again, everything else that goes along with, you know, keeping keeping things uh, ticking along here smoothly. So if you've ever got any questions at any time about an order that's in the system that you're waiting for, or you've got any questions, feel free to email me directly, caroline at evertote.ca. Sometimes I will forward those messages um, to Hannah if they uh, apply to her. Um, she is back in school now. Um, Hannah is back at school. She is in the second year of her doctorate program. Um, Evertote is a part-time job for her, but she still works a lot more hours than a small part-time job. She's here a lot, but she's still, she's quite busy. Packing and shipping is um, our info at evertote.ca email address. And when you email that address, you're going to be reaching either Julie or Robert. And they are the ones um, who are sort of on the front end of packing and shipping. And if you've got a question about where's your order, um, if you need any help with tracking information, sometimes we could figure out a little bit more than sometimes what you can see. Not all the time, but sometimes we can, we can check into those things for you. So um, yeah, today has just been, uh, it's, it's been a pretty typical Monday, but a little bit busier on the kind of task end of things for me. Um, so there just hasn't been any time, um, uh, for, for the nuts and bolts of my job here, which is, you know, working on, um, the, the stitching that has to happen for the shop models and pulling colors for new charts and talking to different designers about potentially new charts that we're going to be bringing into the shop. Um, because I've been, uh, I've been, you know, it's just been one of those, one of those days, but all good all good uh yeah so actually carrie was quite pleased that she thinks she's figured out what was going on with um with the the french hen and everything is in also upheaval here because of the construction right out front the fr outside the front door they've given us notice that tomorrow morning is the is the t is the day for the uh they're replacing our sanitary line from the building to the connection in the street they're also updating the entire um, water line down the entire road. Like everything is going to be brand new outside, but it is a gigantic mess. Everything is torn up. Everything is, is loud. There's trucks backing up and beeping and it's muddy and it's, it's noisy. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit stressful. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but we're coping. Um, you know, we have the odd customer come who, who does a local pickup here at the workshop. We've got a system now where, you know, Hannah or myself or one of the other members of the team can meet them um, in a parking lot that's not that far away to so they can collect their orders. But it's all just that extra layer of what do we have to do to make this work and how can we sort things out? 
the AV meeting with Jacob DeGraff of Modern Folk Embroidery and the team over at the RBC place. This morning went well. It was very simple. We've got everything sorted out, um, everything sorted out that we needed to. If you're interested in those kind of things, we're going to have two microphones and, uh, and a projector and a screen uh, and, a, and a, all the doodads, bells and whistles so that Jacob can hook up his laptop into the, the Beamer projector and have his PowerPoint um, presentation up on the screen. That's all been taken care of. So yeah, we're getting close. We're starting to get close to, uh, to weekend one and weekend two of Jacob Palooza. So I'm pretty excited. I, I have, um, so I was going to start with my, my, my modern folk embroidery to test out. I did test out the, the clover thingy. I did discover that it's best if you go, if you start with the last needle that you put in. So if you put in one, two, three, four, five, you're going to want to pull them out five, four, three, two, one and not going in the order that you put them in. The thread pulls out a little more easily if you go last to first. But um, I haven't put a single stitch in yet. So I think I might just take this home with me this evening because I worked, you know, I, I had some pretty steady, pretty consistent progress on my pieces from last week. Bloom Wildly, I didn't even show you this. I did put in, look, I hardly did anything, but I want credit for what I did do. So every stitch counts. I put in some plum shadow uh, on that flower there. So I, I did do that. I put in one length of floss last night before I went to sleep. So that counts. And I have put in, let me, let me turn the camera around and I'll show you what stitches I have put in for my sampler September. Okay. So because I, I do have a daily stitch allotment with this piece and not with my Virlanda. Um, so I decided to eat my vegetables first and trust me, these are delicious vegetables because who wouldn't want to stitch on this? This is not a hardship. Um, and I did those three letters there. I'm working on the W. I still have, this is, let's see, one, two, three. This is my third length of floss. So I, after I finish this length of floss, I will still have three more um, to put in. I want to finish this vine. I want to finish all of the letters in the bottom row and we'll go from there just when we see what's left. Oh, my needle minder is from my friend Lori. Speaking of Lori, I know, I'll take every opportunity to toot her horn. Lori is um, My Crazy Life. That's her YouTube channel. And she's also the creator. She is the one who came out with uh, Cross Stitchers Planner 2024. This has a retreat planner in it. It has a whip planner. It's got budgeting sheets. It's got all kinds of good things. Um, we are, I think we, we still have a few left of these in the shop and you can get them directly from Lori herself. She's got a video up on her channel about this planner. Um, I will link to her YouTube channel in the drop down box below, but again, it's called my, my crazy life. So, and there are, um, there are 11 free charts in here from various um, cross stitch designers, including Michelle Bendy, Mama Loves UGB, uh, Silver Stitches, and Patty Break for Boys in Newfoundland Girl. It's it's a great planner. It's really fun. This is my copy, and I'm looking forward to digging in. All right, time to clear up. I have to leave soon for my uh, oil change apartment. Uh, uh, oil change apartment. Oil change appointment very exciting and uh and hopefully i'll film a little bit more later today and then get this video up so we can visit together it's the end of the day it is six o'clock and i i don't know what i have recorded today that i can share with you and i was i was not going to put up a video today because i just thought oh, i i don't want to bore you i don't want it to be you know 
I want it to be full of crafting goodness and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, but you know, I think that's not, that's not life, is it? That's not realistic. We all have busy lives um, or we have certain days that are just harder than others. And today was just one of those days and it's, it's already six o'clock. I'd like to spend some time with my family and just relax. And so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to find a comfy seat and I'm going to tell you about my pork chop recipe because my husband, I have to tell you, my husband, his name is John. Many of you who have been visiting with me for years, you know all about my John. Um, he is the maker of the Hearthside Craftworks dance now, but he also, he now works here at home. He, he's a jack of all trades. He does all of the bookkeeping for my business, for Evertote. He still does all of the bookkeeping for his old business. He's still best friends with his, his business partner. Um, he, you know, does the majority of our grocery shopping and cooking and laundry and all of that stuff. He is, I don't know how I would, um, I don't know what I'd do without him. And I just, we just had a, a, a chat after I got home and I was, we were talking because he does my bookkeeping. We were talking about, you know, it was just recently my year end. We were talking about numbers and I, and I, I said, when we were done talking, I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do for, for a video today. He said, and he said, I'm going to go downstairs and make dinner. You go and chat with your friends. <laughs> So here I am having a chat with you. So let me just find a little bit more of a comfortable space and I'll tell you about my pork chop recipe. That's going to be my crafting for today, cooking. Okay. It's not the best angle, but I don't have to hold the camera. I've got it. I've got you propped up on my, my dresser. So I knew somebody was going to ask me about the pork chop recipe. Um, now here's one thing you need to know about me and cooking. I'm a, I'm the kind of cook that just throws everything together. Uh, I don't follow recipes when I'm cooking. When I'm baking, yes, I follow a recipe when I bake most of the time. Sometimes if I know approximately what needs to go into it, I'll just chuck it together. It usually turns out. Cooking, I'm very much a by feel, by touch, by smell. It drives people crazy who want to make what they come in and they smell and they're like, oh, I want that recipe or they eat it and they want the recipe because I don't measure anything. So. If you're a cook like me, this, this, what I make will make perfect sense to you. We buy the pork chops at Costco because they're super thick and they're still reasonably priced for protein at the moment. I don't know if you've noticed, but grocery prices are crazy. <laughs> so pork is still, if you eat meat, pork is still a somewhat affordable meat and at Costco it's you know, you can get the nice thick pork chops. So we start with those. I don't know how this recipe would work recipe if the chops were thinner. I suspect it would be just fine. So the Costco chops, you know, they come, there's like, it's Costco size. So there's like 10 of them, right? So this always makes enough for when I cook, I make enough for two or three meals because more food, less prep, you know, and it, we love leftovers. Leftovers are awesome. Um, Sarah hasn't been home the last, she's working, she's, she's away working. She's not been home the last six weeks. So, uh, we've had a little bit of trouble getting through the pork chops this time. However, my husband and my son are up to the task. My father-in-law, he's been eating less the last few years. Um, so I can usually only get him to eat half a pork chop, but I digress. Thick pork chops. Then I take two cans of tomatoes. Doesn't matter what kind. They can be whole. They can be um, uh, diced. They can be, you know, the ones with the herbs and spices in them. Doesn't matter. I use whatever's in the pantry. We always have plain canned tomatoes. You know, the 28 ounce cans, the big ones. Two cans of tomatoes, some soy sauce, some brown sugar, salt and pepper onions. That's your list. That's your grocery list. And then you just eyeball it. So I layer the pork chops in, in the, I used a, you know, those black enamel roasting pans. I use one of those. It's big. It fits all the chops in single layer, liberally salt and pepper. Then in a separate glass, um, 
large bowl. I'll put the, the tomatoes in and then I will put in, I don't know, soy sauce, <laughs> however much I have in the fridge. It's, you know, if the bottle is leaning a little less then I put in what we have and I don't worry about it. So I am so really sorry, I don't measure it. If I had to guess, it's probably a minimum of a quarter cup, maximum of a half of a cup. Now keep in mind, this is like 10 pork chops and two cans of tomatoes. So this isn't a small amount. So if you're only using one can of tomatoes, you would use less soy sauce. Soy sauce and brown sugar and tomatoes were like meant to go together. They're a beautiful combination. So I put in as much sugar to counteract the acidity and the saltiness of the soy sauce. It's usually anywhere from a tablespoon to two tablespoons, depending on how much soy sauce I've put in. So put the pork tops in, liberally salt and pepper them, mix up the other stuff on the side, then put your scuba goggles on or put a piece of bread in your mouth or keep your onions in the fridge. Those were the tips that I got for onions. But I tell you, onions, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it. I don't hold out hope, but I will chop onions with bread in my mouth. I will keep them in the fridge. I will do anything because boy, howdy, they just make me weep. It is so painful. I'm going to get a scuba mask and try those other things. Lots of onions. The more onions, the better, unless you're not a fan of onions. Lots of people aren't fans of onions and tomatoes. I don't think this recipe is for you, but I love, they just kind of cook all down and they're just yummy and delicious. So I use four huge onions. It's a lot of onions. Slice them up. Um, not small. So we make the slices. I, so it's a large onion. You peel it, slice it in half, and then thick slices from each half. And then break them apart, layer them all over the pork, and then pour the tomato, soy sauce, brown sugar mixture all over the top. Spread it all around so that they're all, you know, happily together and then stick it in the oven at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Put it on 325 Fahrenheit. Um, this is one of those Canadian things. We, we do our, <laughs> we still, our ovens work in Imperial, um, even though sometimes we, we are supposed to measure in metric. So we're a little bit metric, a little bit Imperial. Depends on what you're talking about. So 325 degrees, Fahrenheit in your oven at like two o'clock. Dinner will be ready by six. At around five o'clock, you're gonna to wanna to open the oven. Oh, I also I also put, see, told you, there's, there's stuff I do that I just do it. When I'm making the mixture with the tomatoes, I usually add an extra quarter to third can of water because I like to clean out the can with all that tomatoey goodness. So I just put some water in there and swirl it around and rinse it out and then dump that in the thing. Because the extra moisture is good. So some water, put some water in there as well. Put it in the oven, put the whole pan in the oven at 325. Don't cover it, leave it uncovered because you want that liquid to cook down. As that liquid cooks down at the slightly lower temperature over the longer period of time, it makes the pork incredibly tender. The acidity in the tomatoes, it just breaks it down. And it's, even though, because pork can be quite a dry meat, I have only once had this recipe not turn out. Funny story. My daughter's high school boyfriend at the time came to dinner. It was the first time he came to dinner. I made this recipe and I burnt it only time I have ever ruined this dish was when her then boyfriend, they have since broken up, so it's fine. I can live this down now, but I burnt it and it was terrible. And he was such a gentleman. He ate it anyways. My mother and father were there and my mom and dad teased me, you know, mercilessly. If you're watching this, you know, mom, remember that? <laughs> remember that time I burned the pork chops? Other than that, it's very hard to mess this up. So you just let it cook down, but you're gonna to wanna to take it out around five o'clock or so and take it out. And just like you're basting a turkey, you're gonna baste those pork chops. So tip up the pan, get the juices, use a big spoon, scoop up the juices, spread it all over the pork chops, layer them all out again, redistribute the tomato pieces that are on top and the onions, and then stick it back in the oven 
make your side dishes, make your veg. It goes really, 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 really good. Real, it's delicious with mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes with butter and garlic. Trust me, really good. And then you can spoon the extra tomato and onion on top of the potatoes. So good. Also, you know, broccoli, you got to have broccoli on the side. If you're not a fan of broccoli, I can't help you. Broccoli's awesome. And it's so good. It's delicious. It turns out every time, um, my father-in-law, every time he asks me how I make it, he's never going to make it himself. But every time, bless his heart, he asks me how he makes it, how I make it. And I never cook with recipes, so I don't have anything to offer him. He'd never make it anyways, because he comes here for dinner every night. So <laughs> I don't know why he asks, but it's really sweet. So anyways, if you cook like me, kind of like flying by the seat of your pants and you decide to try it, I hope you like it. It's not the first time I've shared my pork chops on this channel. I'm sure it won't be the last, but if you're new, if you've never heard the pork chop story or recipe before, I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you'll try it and let me know. In, Chris, at, in December for Flossmas, I will share again my chocolate chip cookie recipe. That's my other one. I got two. I got pork chops and I got chocolate chip cookies. Other than that, we're very, very, you know, low key around here. Okay, so I am going to go and have dinner with the family and then I'm going to sit. I'm going to make a gigantic cup of coffee. I know, I don't normally have a huge cup of coffee this late at night, but I think tonight I'm gonna have a big cup of coffee because I really want to have a couple hours of crafting time tonight. I think it'll be good for my soul. I hope that you're well. I hope that you're safe. Thank you for checking in with me for today and, and not, you know, if you're still here watching this, not minding that it wasn't all about crafts today because it just wasn't that kind of day for me today. But I really have been enjoying our daily visits. So thank you for putting up with me today. I'll see you tomorrow and I'll show you what I got up to tonight. Take care everybody. Happy stitching.